Alright, so we all know the classic three-dimensional Rubik's Cube, and some really cool people know about the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. But what about smaller dimensional Rubik's Cubes? <laughs> So in this video, we're going to talk about two-dimensional and even lower somehow dimensional Rubik's Cubes. So we're going to start by making some analogies between the dimensions in order to compare them. So in each dimension, we're going to look at that dimension's equivalent of a cube. So in three dimensions, that's a square. Two dimen huh? In three dimensions, that's a cube. In two dimensions, it's just like a square. And then one dimension is a line. Four dimensions is a, is a hypercube. So, on the three-dimensional Rubik's Cube, each side is just a square, and the turns that you can do on the three-dimensional cube are rotations of that square so that it looks like a square again. So there's four of those, and that's just the turns of, of the side. So there's four ways to rotate a square so that it looks like a square again in two-dimensional space, because squares are two-dimensional, and but the cube is three-dimensional, so it brings the whole layer with it, which is where the different combinations of the puzzle come in. And on the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube, it's kind of the same thing, except each side is a cube, and um, each move you can do is rotating the cube so that it looks like a cube again. So, so, those, so then there's some um, 24 different rotations of the cubic sides. And also notice how on the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube, each of the stickers is a little cube, and on the three-dimensional Rubik's Cube, each of the stickers, well, I guess this is a stickerless puzzle, but each of the stickers is just a two-dimensional square on a cubic, cuby piece. So now, what would a two-dimensional Rubik's Cube look like? Well, first we start with a square, and then we kind of divide it into just a three by three, not a three by three by three. And this means that we get two types of pieces. There's the corner pieces that only have two colors, and the center pieces, which only have one color. So yeah, there we go. It has eight pieces, I think. Yeah, eight pieces. So how does it turn? Well, if we're doing the dimensional analogy from earlier, we had a two-dimensional side rotates in two-dimensional space and brings a three-dimensional layer along with it, like this. So somehow, the two-dimensional Rubik's Cube, the one-dimensional sides would have to rotate in one-dimensional space. But wait! You can't rotate a one-dimensional line in one-dimensional space. There's not enough dimensions to rotate it in. So this actually means that there's no way to scramble a two-dimensional Rubik's Cube and any dimensional Rubik's Cube that's like less than that, so... But there's some people who argue that physical geometry of a cube shouldn't stop it from being a puzzle, and they propose that the two-dimensional Rubik's Cube can have these like mirroring moves. Anyway, with the mirroring moves allowed, there's now 24, I think, different possible um, positions for the two-dimensional cube to be in, but it's still super easy because you can't like get a corner piece in its place but twisted, so... Like, the difficulty with higher dimensional cubes comes when pieces are in the right spot but need to be twisted in, in different dimensions. So on the two-dimensional Rubik's Cube, there's no way to like twist the corner pieces in place, so it's, so it's really easy. <laughs> Alright, now let's go down to a one-dimensional Rubik's Cube. So instead of cutting a square into three by three, we're gonna cut just a one-dimensional straight line into three. <laughs> So this is what it looks like, but where do we add the stickers? Well, if you remember the dimensional analogy, three dimensions, the stickers are two dimensional. On the two dimensional cube, the stickers were now just one dimensional lines. So now on the one dimensional Rubik's cube, the stickers are gonna be somehow like zero dimensional points. And it turns out that there's only gonna be two stickers, one on each of the sides. So the anatomy of a one dimensional cube is it has like a core piece in the middle, and then on the sides are centerpieces, I guess, uh, with only one color, and the sticker is just a zero-dimensional point. And there's no way to rotate a zero-dimensional point, so there's no way to scramble the puzzle or even turn it, and it's not even a puzzle. Just like the two-dimensional Rubik's Cube, it's, it's technically like not even a puzzle if you go by the geometric analogies of the higher-dimensional cubes. I still think it looks super cool, it's just like a cool line with like some dots, and that's fun. So you know how the proper name for this is 3x3x3 three because three three, it's three-dimensional? So the two-dimensional is just 3x3, three three, and then the one-dimensional Rubik's Cube is just 3. <laughs> but we can actually go even lower in the amount of dimensions. So now, how about a zero-dimensional Rubik's Cube? 
Well, if we plug in the numbers, we find that a zero dimensional Rubik's cube has just one piece and zero stickers. And that's because it's just a zero dimensional point for like the core of the, of the puzzle. So it's just like the core, uh, there's no stickers, only one piece, it's like a core piece. It's not even really like a piece piece, but it, it exists, I guess. <laughs> So at first that was where I was going to leave the video, just two-dimensional, uh, one-dimensional, and zero-dimensional Rubik's Cubes. But then I was watching some videos and then I was wondering, what if the amount of dimensions was a negative number? So the mathematical formulas that we use to calculate the number of pieces and number of permutations of a puzzle need the factorial function. So a factorial is kind of like taking a number and then all the numbers smaller than it up until zero multiplied by each other. So four factorial is four times three times two times one, which equals 24. So that's the factorial function. Now the factorial function is only defined for positive whole numbers. So, so how are we gonna get to a negative dimensional Rubik's cube? So there have been attempts to sort of interpolate the factorial function and sort of find the values in between to make like a curve and they call this the gamma function. So, so here's the graph of, of the gamma function. It's all, it's all wiggly, it's very cool. But if you have a keen eye, you'll notice a problem, and that is at negative whole numbers, the graph shoots off to positive infinity and down to negative infinity at the same time. And these are called uh, vertical asymptotes, so there's like no value at the graph. So unfortunately, the formulas still don't work. But then I thought, what if we plug in like negative two and a half dimensions, and then I just got like some weird numbers, like each piece would have 0 0.0013 stickers or something, so that doesn't make sense. So basically nothing I tried makes sense, and obviously like negative dimensions doesn't really exist, but I thought that was kind of cool. And then I scrolled further down the page and saw that the gamma function actually generalizes not just positive and negative numbers to the factorial function, but also complex numbers. So I tried plugging in things like 3 plus 3i dimensional Rubik's cubes, but also got some weird garbage answers. So I was really sad when I figured out you can't have like negative and complex dimensional Rubik's cubes. Or can you? You see, there's something called a complex polytope, which isn't about the number of dimensions being complex, it's about the shapes being complex. So for each real dimension, there's also somehow an imaginary one. So for like a two-dimensional complex cube, it's gonna be four dimensions, but two of the dimensions would be imaginary. So, so there's weird stuff happening. And then if you scroll down even farther, these like, there's these um, projections and like nets of them, and some of them look like they wouldn't make sense, but I guess that's because they're like, like, I, I don't even know, but like, look at this thing. And some people were saying that it could maybe be made into a puzzle, but I couldn't find any drawings of that, or I, d I don't think anyone's tried to make it a thing. Um, but they look super cool, so if anyone wants to like make a program for that, uh, hit me up. <laughs> But I think that's where this video ends, so um, yeah, there's Rubik's Cubes in other dimensions, I guess, so cool math and stuff. Um, this video was sponsored by thecubicle.com. You can buy awesome puzzles at thecubicle.com using discount code ROWAN to save 5% off. Uh, I also added um, channel memberships and you can I enable super thanks now, so if you want to support the video, please, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys in the next video.